the New World, there were no horses or cattle for farming. All the work had to be done by hand. The only large domestic animal was the llama, but these docile creatures have never been harnessed to a plow. The Incas were very skilled at growing potatoes and corn, but because of their geography, they could never be as productive as European farmers. Horses gave Europeans another massive advantage. They could be ridden. To the Incas, the sight of Pizarro's conquistadors passing through their land is extraordinary. They've never seen people carried by their animals before. Some think they are gods, these strange-looking men, part human, part beast. The horses that seemed so exotic to the Incas had already been used in Spain for 4,000 years. In an age before motorized transport, they allowed people to be mobile and control their land. When Javier Martin is not herding cattle, he gives displays of traditional Spanish horsemanship. This style of riding is known as jineta. The emphasis is on control and maneuverability, using bent knees to grip the sides of the horse and only one hand on the reins. Very different from the more formal style of medieval knights. By the 16th century, the Yuneta way of riding had become the dominant style of the Spanish cavalry. This is how the conquistadors would have ridden their horses. It's an amazing display of a big animal being controlled by a person, precise control, stopping and starting and turning. Javier told me that he has been riding since he was five years old. And when I watch this, I have a better understanding of where the conquistadors were coming from. They were masters of these techniques, and they learned these techniques for working with bulls, but the techniques were also good in a military context as well. And I can see that this control would let you ride down people in the open. People who had never seen horses before would have been absolutely terrified watching this. It would be strange and frightening, and that's even before one of these animals is rushing towards you, riding you down, about to lance you and kill you. News of the godlike strangers on their four-legged animals is taken by royal messenger to the emperor of the Incas who's camped in the valley of Cajamarca in northern Peru, guarded by an army of 80,000 men. Atahualpa is revered as a living god, a son of the sun itself. He's in Cajamarca on a religious retreat, giving thanks for a series of recent military triumphs. When he hears about the progress of the Spaniards, he chooses not to have them killed. Instead, he sends back a message. He invites them to join him in Cajamarca, as quickly as possible. Okay. 
Atahualpa wanted the Spaniards to come to Cajamarca and enter into a trap. And to be sure that they would do so, he played like a psychological game with them, sending presents, asking them to come. Atahualpa knew that the Spaniards were not gods. The intelligence reports speak of uh, people wearing wool on their faces, like a llama, like an alpaca, that is, like an animal. Then, they went from one place to the other, wearing on top of their heads a little pot that has never been used for cooking. You need to be crazy to walk with a pot. But you must be beyond salvation if you arrive to a camp and you don't use that uh, pot to cook. Atahualpa had an idea that these were subhumans. What could a few horsemen and a hundred and so Spaniards do to the powerful Inca? Virtually nothing. But Atahualpa spies don't realize that the Spanish are armed with some of the best weapons in the world. At the time of the conquistadors, Spain had the biggest army in Europe, orchestrated from the imperial capital, Toledo. For more than 700 years, the Spaniards had been at war, fighting against the Moors and other European armies. There was an arms race in Europe. To survive, the Spaniards needed to keep up with the latest in weapons technology. Hey! By the 1530s, the harquebus was an important part of the Spanish arsenal. Gunpowder had originally come from China, but its use as a weapon was pioneered by the Arabs. In European hands, guns became lighter and more portable and were used for the first time by foot soldiers on the battlefield. The harquebus was still a crude weapon, but would go on to change the face of warfare. To us moderns, this gun doesn't seem useful for anything. It's like a joke. Its aim is terrible, it takes a long time to reload, and while the shooter's reloading, an assortment would come in and kill him. But the Incas hadn't even gotten this far, and even this gun, with its sound and with the smell and with its smoke and with every now and then a person that it manages to kill, um, would have been terrifying to someone who had never seen this before. This would have been shock and awe, 1532 style. <laughs> For all its bluster, the technology of gunpowder was still in its infancy. The real power of the conquistadors lay elsewhere, with the production of steel. Toledo had some of the best swordsmiths in the world. But why were people here able to craft deadly steel weapons? while the Incas were still making simple bronze tools. There was nothing innately brilliant about Europeans themselves that allowed them to be the ones to make high-quality swords. Just as with guns, swords were the result of a long process of trial and error that began outside Europe. People started working with metal in the Fertile Crescent 7,000 years ago. And because Europe was geographically close to the Fertile Crescent, Europeans inherited this metal technology. But they took this technology on to a new level. European soldiers demanded stronger, longer, sharper swords. 